And then he says, now that you are mine, I will provide, I will protect, I will do everything. Now just turn to me in faith yeah. and believe me that I am. And the amazing thing about the, the I am statement, it, it, it means that God is not past, present, and future. He is right now. He is there for you. So I'm really jacked to have you here today. Yeah, this is so, me too. This, this is, is fun. fun because if you're from a small town, mm -hmm. everybody knows everybody. Mm -hmm. And this is an interesting story about grew up here, left, came back. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to get to that. This is Jason Getson. He's the new pastor. I don't know how long you say that. It's been a while. So are, right. you, are you still April, a new pastor? April 1st. Yeah. Okay. I, th I think I'm going to give myself a year. Call myself the new then pastor. Then you'll be the old pastor? Yeah. Then I'll just be the pastor. <laughs> yeah. He's the pastor at Calvary Chapel and Calvary Chapel Longview that's in Kelso. Right. Yep. Go ahead and explain that. Got to explain that. Yeah. <laughs> pastor Al many years ago planted the church and it was in downtown yeah. Longview. And uh, so it was Calvary Chapel Longview. And then he found a, a building that was uh, just a smoking deal um, that we lease from the Elks. It used to be Kessler's, right? Yeah. So we're right by the mall and uh, just a, a good facility um, at a great price. So that's where they've been. And... Uh, and Pastor Al was a fixture here mm -hmm. in the area, a uh, very dynamic um, pastor who was very um, innovative in, the, mm -hmm. in his approach to ministry. Wasn't just evangelistic, but he was innovative. And he mm -hmm. really, he really uh, made an effort to push people outside the building into the community mm -hmm. and uh, passed away a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, suddenly and left a huge hole in a church that was used to having that hole filled all mm -hmm. the time. Yeah. And they spent some time um, just kind of like processing the whole thing. And then they got hold of you and you ended up coming and things are glorious now. Yeah. They were, yeah. For you and for them. Yeah. And so it's They're a really, really good enjoying. fit. But let's go back, mm -hmm. start a little bit before that because you grew up... Um, Working at your dad's camera store mm -hmm. at Three Rivers Mall. Yeah. Many of you might remember that. Yeah. What was that like? What was it like being in, growing up in Longview, Kelso, and uh, being a son of a business owner here? Yeah. Oh, being a son of a business owner is great because uh, you know, there's just always opportunities for you to help the family out and work. So that was yeah. cool. A neat opportunity to work with my mom and my dad. Um, so it was my senior year of high school that we moved here from eastern Washington. And uh, for the camera store, my dad were, and I were both uh, really into photography, really dug that. And he had a mechanic shop, and he realized that me and my brother were not going to be mechanics. And uh, so he got, got out of that, and we, we did the camera store. So that was really cool. So I got to develop a lot of people's pictures. Was that hard for him? Area. Was that a lot of work for him? Um, every seven years, he needed to change. Hmm. Yeah. So he <laughs> just... He, Yep, from mechanic uh, to real estate to um, the camera store, um, and then other things after that. So, yeah, yeah, he, he just he really loved the challenge. He had an incredible mind. So, and I imagine I I don't know, but I imagine as you were working in the camera store, you thought I'll probably end up doing this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I opened up a studio here uh, with, with a, a buddy uh, that worked at the camera store with me and uh, Ben Musgrove, and we had a, a partnership for about a year, and then that dissolved, and I opened up a studio on 15th Avenue uh, here in Longview and did portraits, and you know, you're up against, at that time, it was the big Seances, yeah. Mr. C's and Merle Art, three excellent photographers, so it was really And the guy's in Rainier, too. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, he's in Rainier now, so yeah, but we were different fields so yeah. when we split ways. So that was really cool. Um, and uh, just had you know enough to really keep me busy, uh, but in the meantime, moving from a small town to here, uh, I had every opportunity uh, for every flavor of sin here, and I realized <laughs> I, I wasn't a Christian, right? Yeah. You know, in a small town, uh, you know, I'd been baptized, thought I was a Christian because I was a good kid, and then moved here and realized I wasn't. Yeah, you know, still keep lying to yourself. That, well, I don't do this yet, or I don't do that yet. And so... At least I don't do this. Yeah, right. I'm not <laughs> one of those guys. And so, anyways, uh, yeah, I found myself, you know, at the lowest point of my life. And uh, friends kept inviting me to the Kelso First Assembly of God. Yeah. And uh, so I got saved there. Wow. What was it like? Um, how, did it, how, how, did, how did you and Jesus meet? Yeah. 
Um, I kept saying, no, I'm a Christian. And they're like, no, you're not. You need to come to church. And uh, Dusty Boylan, she was just always inviting me. Great kid. That's cool. Uh, now an adult. But um, <laughs> uh, just ended up being there. And there's just, you know, a good group of people. Um, Tracy, Tracy Munchen? Munchen? Munchen. Yeah. Which I don't know her, her name, not last name now, but I just met her the other day, running into her at church. That was cool. Uh, but she was part of the youth group and uh, Pastor Gary Holdy. And one night, he, uh, on a Wednesday night, he was just preaching the gospel and the Lord hit me, you know, and I knew I needed a savior. Did you fight? No. No, I was in you a place where I, I knew. I, like I say, I had got to the lowest in my life. And I never thought that I would be, you know, in the place I was. You know, yeah. I didn't do drugs or anything like that. I was always a pretty straight kid. But for me, it was just like, whoa, I've really, I've really done things I wouldn't think I'd, I would yeah. do, you know. And running with the wrong crowd. And, um, yeah, I went up to the altar, you know, the carpeted step. I don't know why we call it an altar, but yeah. <laughs> I went up there. And I just wept and had it out with the Lord. And I, I knew at that moment that my guilt of sin had been removed from me. Yeah. I was a new creation. Uh, born again. You know, my guilt, the things that I had done wrong, the shame that I was carrying very much in my heart at that time. Yeah. You know, I, I, I realized that Jesus had paid for that on the cross. He bore the burden of my shame and my guilt and my future punishment for my sin. Yeah. He, he took that there on the cross. And... Uh, I don't remember what Gary, Pastor Gary said that night, you know, but it, it, it made sense. And uh, I, I knew I, I had an opportunity to be set free. And, uh, and God met me there. What was day two like? Um, I was stoked. You know, I was stoked. I <laughs> uh, started to tell all my friends. Uh, pretty evangelistic at, at the beginning. Didn't know a thing. I remember sitting down with a friend at LCC uh, around, around a table there in the lunchroom. And I'm like, we don't even know where we, the Bible came from. <laughs> You know, and then thankfully Tyler Ramey, Tyler <laughs> oh, Ramey yeah. he's, he's walking by, whoa, whoa. And Tyler <laughs> Ramey, he was instrumental in, in reeling me in and everything too. So great guy. Um, so he sat down and finished the apologetic side of that conversation. It yeah. was really good. And, uh, you know, struggled with sin uh, and everything, just like everybody else when they're, they're young believers. Um, met a lot of great people, uh, seen them come out of, the, you know, things and into the their walk with the Lord and it was really cool and then um, since I was saved and uh, a, a you know a suitable husband right after that you know I, I mentioned before that just after that my God introduced my wife to me I went on a retreat with the uh, the youth group we were going on a hike up in uh, the uh, Sawtooth Mountains in Leavenworth and um, every, there was like 50 people that we're going to be going. I was like, oh, she's cute. And she's cute. <laughs> you know, because I really wanted to be married. Yeah. And missionary dating was just not working. I just yeah. kept, it just like, this is not working out. And so I was like, all right, God, I'm done dating. And then there's going to be these 50 girls or 50 people. And a bunch of them are, are, are cute girls on this thing. So I'm going to stick in the church. You're going to pick a wife? Yeah. You know, it's like. <laughs> Parents? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So like Adam Parnaby yeah. going to town to get me a bride. Right. So anyways, we go on this hike and uh, everyone canceled except for the leadership and me because snow was coming. Oh. And praise God, it was beautiful weather because I would have froze to death. I was not prepared for snow. A anyways, I just uh, I just sat there in my tent and I prayed. Wow. Wow. Has prayer always been a big part of your relationship with Jesus? Uh, I think all of us. would. I mean, say, conversation with God. Yeah. I think all of us would say not nearly enough. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Because you know he's there. Yeah. It is a tangible resource for us to bring our cares to. He's faithful. Yeah, yeah. Pretty, pretty remarkable story. Yeah. So I love I, it. I love it when it's like everybody can relate to that story. Yeah. Because everybody's felt that way. Like they, you know, if I was just a little bit better, I'd make a great Christian. <laughs> right. Uh, you know. It's, yeah. And so the, the cool part, though, I come down from the mountain and. Months in advance, I had booked weddings for the summer. Yeah. Right? So months in advance, booked a wedding. Um, Booking weddings means taking to, pictures to, for weddings. Yeah, to take the photographs. I got I got a deposit in hand so I can live. And so uh, I show up the very next Saturday after I'm back is there's this beautiful girl. She's the maid of honor at her best friend's wedding. And I ended up meeting her, right? And, wow. And so uh, the very next Saturday, she's the maid of honor in her sister's wedding. And it ends up being... Same photographer. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And uh, yeah, I saw him photographing these two weddings because I'm really slow. And God's like, 
there she is. I'll put her in there another wedding is. for you. <laughs> yeah. And so, I, you know, I get to see her. She's just gloriously beautiful and everything. I'm like, wow, way out of my league. So yeah. anyways, you know, when we, uh, c- c- Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, you know, trust in the Lord with all your heart. You finish it because I'll cry. <laughs> Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you did. He'll direct your paths. Yeah. 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 Super cool. Was your wife looking to be married? Um, or did you have to she, talk her into it? She had come out of bad relationships too. So she had totally stopped dating. Yeah. So she was so apprehensive, you know, so I, I didn't have permission to tell her I loved her until after eight months. Yeah. That wasn't the written de- deal, but that's, you know, it's like, <laughs> not gonna. You're self-aware enough. Yeah. Yeah. To, you know, she just like, don't, don't try to deceive me. Uh, so, that's great. Yeah. And you cool. ended up getting married in what year? Uh, 92. 92. 92. Yep. We met in 90. So met Jesus in 90, then my wife, and then got married. And then uh, 94, uh, we moved to Eastern Washington and started our journey over there. And uh, for 16 years, uh, the previous 16 years at uh, Calvary Chapel Methow, tiny little church, it was a, a replant. It had fallen apart a couple times over the years, and I, I was sent out there to just see if we could... Um, make it work and it was hard struggle so you know in my young zeal I said God please send me yeah to the most difficult hard-hearted people on the planet and I think he did <laughs> I mean the, the, the not the church there of course they were they were great but that area just people did they didn't want to hear about God they didn't want anything to do with Christianity little independent yep very independent people yeah, yeah. so that was cool because then you just learn to just stay the course yeah yeah be one of them fit in yeah, lots of conversations over yeah. coffee. Yeah, and you started making babies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and yeah. you made a lot of them. Yeah, my wife and I, we have five daughters. Yeah, and uh, one's moved out. Four of them are still at home. Uh, one's just finishing up her homeschooling, and the other one is uh, fourteen and in the deep of it. So, they're they're awesome. And their dad, their daughters, daughters, your daughters think their dad's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Mostly, well, he yeah. is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's a good guy. Yeah. Thanks. And then, how did you get connected with Calvary Chapel Longview? Oh, wow. Because I'm not sure anybody really has this down except maybe a small mm. group of... Right, okay. Yeah, of course I knew Al passed away. Uh, Al and I knew each other uh, when there was a big fire in 2014. Uh, Al came out, he brought some generators, um, you know, to just give to the community. And, uh, yeah, we had a good visit there and stuff. So I knew Al, and when we'd come here to visit my wife's family... Uh, we'd stop by there or, or a different Calvary at the beach, but it was just easier to go to Longview. And so Al and I would always catch up and stuff. I, I knew he'd moved on to heaven and uh, I just hadn't heard anything. So I thought they must have it all under control. Well, uh, last July, we were out here for family vacation. July yeah. 30th, we went to church there and uh, they announced, hey, we're still looking for a pastor. And, uh, you know, we're, we're talking with different guys, but, you know, just want to let you know, keep praying because we haven't found the guy yet. Um, so I gave my that information. That is great. Yeah. I what gave, a setup. I gave my information to uh, one of the elders, uh, the guy who made the announcements, and I never heard back from him. And so a, a friend that I've had from over on the other side for a long time, he said, hey, you know, I, I, I have a pastor friend from Portland, uh, Terry McNabb. You should call him. He just has years and years of, of you know, pastoral you know, experience, and he's retired now. And he's doing what we call Poyman Group. They're just yeah. they're retired pastors who help out pastors. You give them a call. So we're sitting on the beach there, uh, Sunset Beach, the whole family in the back of the truck, grilling burgers and just kind of hanging out. And uh, so I call up Terry, and, and we visit for a while, and I, and I lay it all out for him. So I'm working in a, a side job, which became a lot more. So I started as a substitute custodian at the public school yeah. and a substitute teacher. And then in within a few years, I was the director of transportation, and director of operations. And so we consolidated two things. And in those last four years, it was just too much yeah. for one person. Plus there was cutbacks. So there was just too much uh, for for me. I mean, Superman could have done it, I'm sure. But um, <laughs> I, it was over my head. So it just was too much. And you know, you experience that just physical, emotional burnout. Yeah. Um, and so right about that July time is when I was realizing I, I would really love to have a change. You know, I, I was praying regularly. All right, God, do you have something new? And no open doors. So you just stay with what you're doing. And uh, so I called that guy's number and said, hey, I'm, I'm in town for a couple more days if you want to, you know, talk. And nothing. So it's like, all right, not an open door. Praise the Lord. God's got something else. So um, go back to work and... Uh, just, it was a, it was a difficult year um, from 
July, and then about Thanksgiving, um, things changed. And so I'm on paid administrative leave, uh, and uh, I, uh, I, I'm getting 94 paid days off. So when you're sitting in there and they make that announcement, mm -hmm. anything from the Lord? Um, in July? Yeah. There, there was that, there was that excitedness because on one hand it's like, wait a how minute, can we get back to Longview? Yeah. So my wife can be closer to her family and you know, just, just change. Okay. One thing I was so tired of snow over there on the oh, other yeah, side. Yeah. So we're in a pretty heavy snow belt. Um, and, uh, in my role, I'm in charge of snow, not only for buses, whether routes change and schedules get canceled or whatever, I'm in charge of snow removal. So yeah. I'm driving school bus. I'm, I'm dispatch for the, I'm driving school bus. I'm driving snow, snow plow at, you know, 5.00 AM making the snow call at 3.00 AM, you know, so you're sleep deprived and it's like, I'm so tired of snow. And the previous winter we had snow began, not winter, but snow began, <laughs> on, uh, like October. October 10th or some ridiculously early right thing. after school starts. Yeah. And feet of yeah. snow. And it was just, it was like way too much. And then the mercy of God, as we're getting ready to move this year, there's no snow. You had more snow here in Longview than we had over there. <laughs> and so I didn't have to deal with that at all, trying to pack up and stuff. So yeah. anyways, um, I just wondered if the Lord said, um, are you ready? He was putting that on my heart, you know, uh, until there's an open door, you just stick with what you're doing. Yeah. You know, so the open door began to open as the other door seemed like it was closing. So I'm on paid leave, um, getting a great vacation, uh, but I have to stick around. And so my wife says, hey, since you're off, let's go visit my family. Yeah. And so we make a quick trip over here uh, for New Year's Day uh, church. And um, we're sitting there on New Year's Day, we, however that worked out that, that Sunday. And um, the pastor announces, the associate pastor announces, hey, you know, we've all been, you know, praying for a pastor and we thought we had it, this, the deal sealed, you know, after a five month relationship with, with a, with a young pastor, we thought we had it and he just backed out and you could feel, oh, you could feel the breath just yeah. in the room. And it was like, and I look at my wife and you know, he, he prefaced with saying, you know, that we don't announce this all the time. Yeah. So there's an announcement. So just so happens that we're there gleaning in Boaz's field. Right. And so <laughs> I nudge my wife. I'm like, you know. Because uh, we're both really perfectly ready for a change, yeah. you know. And uh, then that pastor pops out of the side doors right by where we're sitting as service ends. So I'm like, I better sit. I better say hello. And so I did, and, and it got really exciting. Uh, that the two pastors that were in, or elders that were in charge of you know the pastoral finding committee, their eyes lit up, and and there was nothing but open doors uh, after that with with everything. Even when I called the pastor who sent me out said, Hey, do you know anybody else? And he says, I'm, I'm, I retired from my pulpit. Yeah. And I'd love to step in. Yeah. So the guy who sent me is filling my pulpit as a, as a retirement gift, you know, <laughs> a retirement gift for me to you, Rob. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just so cool that, that when the Lord opens the doors, they just stay open. And, uh, and there was opposition, spiritual opposition all around. And the elders here experienced a lot of that. And I, I did too. And it was cool. But um, our congregation was like, you know, one of my elders, he's like, I had a dream, you were leaving. Yeah, you know, so he was prepared. Everyone was like, Yeah, you know, you've put your time in this yeah. is this is time for you to have one career be able to focus on on what you're doing. Um, my mom, who's a recent widow, uh, um, she kind of sent her that exploratory text, you know, that we're in negotiations with the church over in Longview. And she's like, what are you doing here still? You know, so <laughs> it was awesome. It was just one of the, <sighs> to experience. I know I'm favored by God. Yeah. Because I'm going to heaven. But to experience that favor in this life. Yeah. So humbling. Yeah. Awesome. Isn't it cool when you realize it's not about him jumping on your program, mm -hmm. but it's about you getting yeah. into his program. Mm -hmm. And you yeah. feel like this is the best thing ever. Yeah. I love this feeling of yeah. being part of what he's doing. Yeah. And he was doing something in Longview. Yeah. Yeah, he yeah. was. And he, he's sovereign. You know, yeah. it all works out according to his good pleasure. Yeah. And, and it's just cool to see how things were just moved in place. And, you know, I already had a portion of my heart was for here. I, you know, when I realized it's like, whoa, I was praying for me. 
you know, my wife and I, because we're praying for a new yeah. pastor for them, you know, you're like, hey, that's us. <laughs> that's so, <laughs> it's so cool. cool. Yeah. Are you, a, do you dream? I mean, like, nope, not, not dream. <laughs> Are you a visionary? Oh, uh, you know, um, for the last five, six years um, of ministry over there, maybe eight years, um, it was, it was really just, let's get through yeah. the day. Um, everything was just pressed to the max. So uh, dreaming in advance. Now, if we left town, if we went on vacation, if we did something after a day of recuperation, yeah. I'm like, wow, I think God wants to go here. So yeah, I'm super excitable for the Lord and uh, I want to try every door. Uh, I don't want to go through any door that he hasn't opened for us. Um, so yeah. So does that mean you're patient? Yes. Yeah. Um, that's what he taught me in the, in that how. Yeah. Absolutely. Kudos. That's a tough one to get past. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So did he ever, when you, when you said yes to this and they said yes to this, did he start to give you a sense of direction and destiny for you personally and the, the church together? Did you start getting a sense? Cause I know Al was extremely visionary mm -hmm. in one sense that he, he was always thinking about where we could go. Mm -hmm. Did you start to pick up some of that from the Lord? Um, currently it's just, let's not rock the boat. Right. God's God's, it's almost like catching a good wave. Yeah. And so we're riding that wave right now. Yeah. And so, um, within the next year, we're going to, I'm not trying to get you to yeah. divulge the yeah. future. Right. But we're, I just wondered if he, yeah. If he began to do something kind of new in you, Jason, mm -hmm. where he was uh, not just dealing with you in the moment, but also directing your steps a little further out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely the direction that we're going to go, um, I, I really want to just focus on my pulpit skills yeah. and bring it hard, not, not a cool. hard sermon, but bring truth yeah. and grace. Um, People have just been really blessed. You know, I, I think about things differently than other people. I'm very theologically minded. Um, I really believe that if we understand God's word according to how he said it, as Jesus says, if you believe on me as the scriptures have said, then out of your heart will flow rivers of living water. Yeah. So having a, a proper understanding of, of God and uh, making that applicable to people's lives, God will change them. Um, and uh, so that part uh, for sure. But as far as the congregation goes and the days that we're living yeah. with the potential of another lockdown, uh, the potential of Christianity becoming illegal yeah. in our country, uh, like that, you know, uh, it, it could happen very quickly. Um, I really want to implement uh, where there's a lot more one-on-one, one-on-six -on -one, one -on discipleship sort of things, uh, small groups. So right. currently, um, I have one of our elders, he's, uh, he's prepared, he's, you know, been teaching this for years and years and counseling for years and years. Uh, so he's prepared a, an excellent curriculum for being a disciple, a biblical counseling discipler, you know, so biblical Very cool. discipling. Yeah. So we're going to do that course and then, um, we're going to begin implementing small groups and stuff. So getting, seeing who the leaders are, this next generation of leaders, uh, who they are and pairing them up with people to disciple and uh, creating that atmosphere of discipleship where, you know, you disciple until they are mature and then they go and they make disciples yeah. themselves. So the corporation of the church there, or corporately, the church is very evangelistic. Um, and there's a lot of very heavy disciplers there, but I really want to work that into the congregation yeah. and, and have, uh, have, have church seven days a week, um, keep uh, the possibility for wherever people can plug in. So it's not just Wednesdays and Sundays and yeah. things like that. So. I, I, I agree with you completely. I think discipleship is a huge part of the next move of God mm -hmm. that happens, whatever that looks like, how, wherever that's going. Mm -hmm. But, and when I think of discipleship, I don't necessarily think of getting smarter theologically, mm -hmm. but, um, doesn't hurt. No, <laughs> no. Cause it's got to come from a good place. Mm -hmm. But the thing that I've seen the church really struggle with is articulating what they believe. Mm. And being able to share that with people and not just saying, Hey, you should come to church with you. You should right. go to my church, right. but sitting down with people and saying, let me tell you about the Jesus that I know and mm -hmm. that I know loves me right. and why he does and how he does and mm -hmm. how that affects me. I think a, one of the keys to discipleship is being able to articulate what it is you think and believe about him and mm -hmm. what he's called you to do. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a huge part of where we're going. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, 
there's people who will never step their foot inside of a church. Yeah. You know, but they will go to a living room or they might sit at a coffee shop and visit. And uh, if people are, the church today has gotten into an Old Testament model. Yeah. Or, you know, they say, hey, we're not under law, we're under grace, things like that, but that, which, which is true. But they invite people to the, temp, the temple. You know, like you, if you wanted to come into Judaism, you came to the temple. Yeah. And, but today we are the temple of God. And God says, now go ye temple where the Holy Spirit is chosen to dwell inside of his believers and go into all the world and make disciples. So yeah. that's evangelism. That's discipleship. That's whatever you can do in between. You know, and everyone has their own calling, their own style. We want to help them refine that and, and get, you know, substantiated in it so that when someone says, you know, why do you believe that right. versus this, you know, they have a reason for the hope that's yeah. within them. And uh, yeah, so I think people are dying to know why we're the way we are. I think if we're at peace, right. if we have faith, yeah. if we trust people, if we have love mm -hmm. in our hearts, mm -hmm. they want to know, yeah. where does that come from? Yeah. And it's not because I go to this church or that church. It's because God's done something. In right. Us. You obviously have been impacted deeply by the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some, something got into yeah. you. And, it's, and it, when it comes out, it's beautiful. God's good. And when that happens to you, you just want to give that away. To, you want right. people to experience that same right. thing, right? Because the river of living water, yeah. which yeah. Jesus said is the Holy Spirit. So, yeah. Yeah, and you want everybody to just have... Just this love for God, you know, nothing fake about it. Just let God live in you. And I think where people really miss, miss, miss the mark is they have a contractual relationship with God yeah. instead of a covenantial relationship with God. Um, this is, I think, what I'll talk about Church in the Park on this Sunday, um, that people think their religion, their relationship with God is based upon if I do, then he will. Yeah. But it is done because he saw you couldn't do. Yeah. Jesus paid it all. Yeah. And now we come into this relationship where he doesn't say, you will be my son if, or you will be my bride if. He gives us the Holy Spirit of promise, makes us his bride, seals us in heaven, seats us in heavenly places, gives his Holy Spirit to be our comforter and our keeper. And then he says, now that you are mine, I will provide, I will protect, I will do everything. Now just turn to me in faith yeah. and believe me that I am and the amazing thing about the, the I am statement, it, it, it means that God is not past, present, and future. He is right now. He is there for you. And, and he, he really wants to manifest himself personally in your heart and in your mind, proving to you that he is present, he loves you, that there's no act of righteousness that you can do to make him like you more. He liked us. He loved us. He demonstrated his love for us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Yeah. You know, so if we have come into this relationship with him, there's no more covenant. There's no fear of signing on the line. I don't know if I can keep the standard that God has. He knew Adam couldn't. He knew the Israelites couldn't. He knew no one can. And so he sent his son to become the final sacrifice. So our sacrifices don't matter towards our righteousness yeah. any longer. But our righteousness is granted to us by God through faith in Jesus Christ. And we're born again. We're God's kids. And he has, he has a future for us that's, that's unbelievable. It's just, I mean, how can you not be excited about that sort of thing? You yeah. Know? I love it. So you don't have any trouble hoping for the future at all, do you? No, no. Yeah. Uh -uh. There's know, a like lot said, of reason to hope. I, I really had a hard eight years or so, you know, where it was just like, God, where are you? Yeah. You know, um, and, you know. Like all of us, I, you know, my mind went dark places, you know, you're just like, is God here? And then for me, open your Bible. People say, I haven't heard from God in a long time. Yeah. Open your Bible. Let God speak to you through his word. Jesus is the manifestation of God's word. You know, he walked this earth. He, he loves us so much. He gave us yeah. this huge covenant to just understand and look at illustrations in the Old Testament, you know, direct doctrines in the New Testament, you know, just learn these things and see that, you know, he loves you so much. You know, you read Paul's letters, and he, it's, it's Jesus and salvation, Jesus and salvation, just time and time and time again. You know, it's it just, it's so encouraging, and it's God's living word for our souls, and it's just nothing like it. And yet, as a pastor who knows this, sometimes I'm like, oh, no, i got to read my Bible. Yeah. You know, i got to, I have to do that. Yeah. Because I know I have to. I know I have to keep God's word fresh in my mind, but there's times I'm distracted, and life's busy, and you're just like, i got to do it, but... Thankfully, I think in the past 25 years, I've maybe missed reading my Bible once in the morning, yeah. you know, every day. You know, if you eat breakfast, which I don't, 
<laughs> if you eat breakfast, you can make time for the Bible, you know, and just get God's word in you. And he will do amazing things in your life. He is doing amazing things. Yeah. Well, as an old pastor yeah. in this area, I've been around for a while, and somebody who cares deeply about the city and about the state of the church and the community, mm. I um, welcome home. Yeah, thank you. Welcome back. Welcome Excited. back to the place where it all started, where yeah. you fell in love with Jesus. Welcome home. And Amen. I hope you have an amazing time here. I hope you and your wife and your family um, just flourish here like crazy thank and you. plant thank lots you. of seeds and, and uh, make this a, really, a place with a really sweet aroma yeah. to the Lord. That's awesome. And I hope your church... Does the same, but yeah. more for you, Jason. I, I just, that. I just hope this is a place where you really get to be everything God created you to be. Cool. Thank you for Me being too. here today. Yeah. Thank you for inviting me. This is really fun. Yeah.